Now to neighbouring Chad, where after three years of a military transition, voting has been taking place in a presidential election. We're seeing reports that a man has been shot dead in the south of the country. Electoral officials said that an unknown assailant who had been barred from voting opened fire there indiscriminately. He was among a group of people who had gathered in the city of Mondu, demanding that their right to vote be upheld. Security, high youth unemployment, poor infrastructure and electricity crisis and a struggling economy have been the key campaign issues. It's an election that the opposition says should be boycotted because it's an attempt to legitimize the Debi dynasty. The transition military leader, General Mohammed Debi, says he'll beat his nine opponents in the first round. Today is voting day and thank God we've come to vote for our president of the republic. May God preserve him and our country. We are behind him because he has promised to fight unemployment. We hope he'll give our children jobs once he's elected. It's a source of pride for me and for the whole delegation to be here today, this morning, in this first office to observe. I say observe, it's a task. After here, we'll move on to other offices to observe. What's sure and reassuring is that we can already see that everything is going smoothly. In other words, Chadians have accepted democracy in Chad. With more on the elections in Chad, I'm joined now in the studio by Arise's political editor, Sumner Sambo, who's been keeping an eye on developments there. Good to see you, Sumner. What are you hearing about how voting has gone today? Has there been a good turnout? I understand that lots of polling booths were empty, but some were full. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, been a mixed grill, Charles, uh, considering uh, that uh, uh, this is the third year that this election is holding since uh, Mahama came to power. Uh, we're having a challenge where people do not fully trust the electoral system, uh, but though uh, the head of state has actually tried to make the electoral body independent, and mm. their polls opened uh, much earlier, and then uh, we haven't seen any major incident other than what you just talked about. Uh, some of the observers that have come in, including from neighboring countries, have had some good words, uh, but voter turnout is actually an issue in the election at the moment, uh, because, I mean, there's a lot of credibility issues that come with mm. it and uh, the thinking is that uh, the younger Debbie the younger Debbie is actually trying to hijack the democratic system uh, there are about 10 contestants and one of them happens to be his prime minister who was appointed just in January 1 mm. uh, that's success Masra and uh, this is the first time we're having an election where the president and <laughs> the prime minister are all contesting and there's also another former prime minister uh, but uh, the justice and equality party which the prime minister is uh, contesting is being accused of fronting, of wanting to go along with the uh, president's uh, party in such a way that there's a gentleman agreement uh, that if uh, Debbie Jr. actually w wins, uh, he would still appoint uh, Masra as the prime minister. And if, it, if it's Masra that actually wins, he would appoint uh, Debbie a prime minister. So uh, there's a lot of convincing, actually, but the way it's been tailored, I mean, we don't really see any major mm. challenge to Debbie. And, I mean... In that regard, the opposition has described the election as a sham and, and called for a boycott um, because they don't see the process as democratic, but people still turned out to vote. Yeah, I mean, that's the interesting thing, including uh, the prime minister right now, because, mm. I mean, before this incident, he himself had fled out of the country because of the way uh, the president was handling the situation there. And then, of course, you know that it's, uh, it's actually the Speaker of Parliament that was supposed to have taken over immediately after uh, the elderly Debbie's death and uh, before the younger Debbie actually took mm. over and seized power. And then there's been a clamp down on opposition. Sometime uh, uh, last year, there was the you know, shooting down of a major opposition leader, uh, Dilo, and that actually made a lot of people to be afraid for the transition process. But uh, this is just the first step of the election. There's going to be uh, a run-up mm. uh, to the election. Also, the second leg of it is sort of uh, on June 22nd, and then the third leg of it will be on July 7th. So uh, we'll keep watching to see what actually right. happens, but it's a country that young people are actually looking up to the government to actually see if they could have a ray mm. of hope. We've seen some sort of reforms that have been introduced, including trying to make the electoral body a little bit independent, uh, trying to give rights to you know lots of groups and all of that, but the believability 
in the government is very very low mm. because we what what we have seen is actually state capture by the Debbie family and of right. course you will be wrong if you back the opposition and they are thinking that almost all state institutions are uh, uh, you know uh, moving towards right. uh, providing a, a clean right. atmosphere They're basically for the rubber government stop to come stamping back. The, yeah. the, the, the military leader and Chad of course caught in the middle of a raging sea of conflicts all around it, the war in Sudan to the east, the insurgency in the Central African Republic, and of course the rest of the Sahel, which is under military rule and is terrorized by Islamist militants. Are those the kinds of pressing security challenges that an incoming government is likely to face, in addition to, of course, the domestic, economic, and social issues? Yes, indeed. Uh, but the good thing is that Chad has also, um, over the years, built a very strong army that has got um, lots of uh, uh, other neighboring countries been envious of it, including Nigeria here. I mean, they've got a very good fighting force, uh, a military that is envied uh, within the Sahel region because of how they've been able to deal with militancy, insurgency, terrorism, and all of that. So in terms of it, there's a consensus within some elites within the country that um, uh, uh, General Mahatma Debi should actually be allowed to actually continue because he understands the way the security architecture of the country is, having stayed with his father, served with him uh, way up until his death in 2021. And if you look at the refugees coming in from Sudan and the pressure from Nigeria to through Boko Haram, uh, the consensus within some of the ECOWAS leaders is that, look, I mean, if, if the country actually thinks it's good enough to continue, he should be allowed to continue. Right. But there are pressing economic issues. The issues of poverty, about 17 million people in the country with 40 percent of that 17 million being in extreme poverty one of the uh, uh, i mean poverty rated countries in the world where people are terribly poor right. i mean uh, it's left to be seen if indeed the election will come out credible but this is just the first leg out of three legs okay. of it and we just hope that when the process is concluded by july 7 uh, international observers may rate it higher right okay mm -hmm. Sumner, thank you very much indeed. Sumner Sambo is a Rises political editor.